The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about cruelty to animals, praying that you will help to stop it. Right now we're in what the anthropologist Richard Leakey described as the world's sixth major extinction event. That means that between the year 2000 and the year 2065, we will lose more species of plants and animals to extinction than we've lost in the last 65.2 million years since uh, the end of the Jurassic period. And uh, we will be responsible for that. And of course, we could be on that list. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television. This week, we speak with Captain Paul Watson, the vegan founder and president of the nonprofit Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Having been in the forefront of global marine conservation efforts for more than three decades, Captain Watson will share his wisdom and insights about the mass decimation of marine wildlife worldwide. Sea Shepherd is best known for bravely upholding international law by stopping whaling fleets from taking the lives of cetaceans. The International Whaling Commission was established in 1946 primarily to uh, protect the whaling industry, not to protect whales. But in the early 80s, uh, enough member nations joined it to turn that around so it became a conservation body. But the problem has always been that um, they have no enforcement. We have all the laws, the treaties, and the regulations we need to protect our oceans. We just simply don't have enforcement. Captain Watson recalls the very first time he witnessed the cold-blooded, brutal murder of two gentle noble whales, an event that occurred in June 1975 and transformed his life forever. We'd come up with this idea to uh, defend whales uh, by putting our bodies between the harpoons and the whales, and uh, Robert Hunter and I were in this small boat, and every time the uh, harpooner tried to maneuver the harpoon to get a shot, I would block it. And that worked for about 25 minutes, and then the captain came down the catwalk and he screamed into the ear of the, um, of the harpooner and then looked at us, smiled, and brought his finger across his throat, and that's when we realized we were in trouble. And uh, a few moments later, uh, this ex explosion happened and the harpoon flew over our head and slammed into the backside of one of the whales in front of us, and uh, she screamed, and it was like a woman screaming in pain, and she rolled on her side in a fountain of blood, and suddenly the largest whale in the pod slapped the water hard with his tail and disappeared. And he swam underneath of us and threw himself straight out of the water at the harpooner to defend his pod, but uh, he was ready for them. And uh, the, he had an unattached harpoon, and he pulled the trigger and sent an exploding harpoon into the head at point-blank range of this whale. And, and th this whale fell back screaming and rolling in agony on the surface. And, uh, and as he was rolling about, I, I caught his eye, and he looked straight at me, and then he dove again, and this time I saw a trail of bloody bubbles coming really fast towards our small little boat, and he came up and out of the water, and, and as his head rose slowly out of the water, and I looked into his eye, and um, what I saw there really changed my life, because I saw understanding, that the whale understood what we were trying to do, and I could see the effort that he made to pull himself back, and slowly his head began to go back in uh, to the sea and I saw his eye disappear beneath the surface and, and he died. He could have killed us and chose not to do so, so he spared our life. Uh, so I feel personally indebted to the fact that I'm alive to that particular whale. And so from that moment on I decided that I would do what I do for whales and other creatures of the oceans, the sharks, the turtles, the fish. One of the most senseless, bloody and inhumane whale massacres Captain Watson has ever seen is sadly a regular occurrence in the Faroe Islands, an island group about 450 kilometers southeast of Iceland. The killing of pilot whales in the Faroe Islands is rather unique in many ways. According to the Faroese, the pilot whales are delivered to their shores by God. It's a gift from God and uh, it's an excuse for them to kill these animals. They wipe out the entire pods. There's no survivors. And uh, children participate in it. They're clubbed, they're slashed, they're stabbed. It's a horrendous affair. It's bloody. The only thing I can compare it to is uh, the Roman Colosseums 2,000 years ago. And, but they say that's part of their tradition. It's part of their culture. And culture should never, ever be a justification for this kind of an atrocity. 
They only eat about 20-30% of the meat, the rest of it is thrown away. And last year we actually found the pilot whale graveyard when our divers went down and filmed it, the place where they were dumping the bodies uh, and then there was like hundreds and hundreds of bodies just on the bottom of the, of the sea. But whales are not the only marine animals who are victims of vicious slaughter by humans. Captain Watson has also witnessed the violent deaths of helpless harp seal pups in Canada, almost all of whom are only a few weeks old. Originally when we went there, they were killing white coats, which are like under 14 days. Then the government uh, passes law saying they were no longer going to kill baby seals, they were going to kill adults. But now the government's definition of adults is anything over 14 days. So 14 to 36 days is now considered an adult seal, even though it's helpless on the ice and can't move. Uh, it's a very, very... Um, uh, hard to really describe just how horrible it is. They go around whacking these seals with clubs or hack a -picks. Uh, I've seen them skinned alive. Through its hugely destructive practices, the global fishing industry has destroyed fish and shellfish populations in our oceans, leading to delicate marine environments being wiped out around the world. Uh, large uh, drag trawlers, uh, bottom trawlers, midwater trawlers, long lines, drift nets. Uh, that kind of technology is something that uh, fish, for instance, cannot just keep up with. Uh, we're taking the fish out of the ocean far, far faster than they're able to reproduce. We have removed about 90% of the fishes from the oceans. And uh, we're taking 70 to 90 million sharks alone. If you remove that, um, the shark from the ecosystem, you're going to do a lot of serious damage to that ecosystem. The bloodthirsty fishing fleets are not just supplying fish markets with aquatic life. They are also selling their catches to environmentally damaging and inherently cruel aquaculture operations. To raise one salmon on a salmon farm requires on average the catching of 75 fish from the ocean to feed it and it's converted into pellets. So you're actually putting a much more uh, pressure on oceanic ecosystems by raising these fish on salmon farms. And uh, in addition, they he heavily use uh, grow growth hormones, antibiotics, and because salmon raised on a farm have a dirty white flesh which nobody's going to buy, what they do is they put a dye in the food pellets to artificially color the meat, so it's not even real. And uh, so it's a very, very destructive both to the ecosystem and it's not very healthy. Also, 40% of all of the fish in the ocean is uh, fed to livestock. Factory farm chickens are eating more fish than all the albatross and puffins in the world put together. You know, so pigs are becoming a major aquatic predator. So eating pork or beef or chicken is actually consuming the ocean. Do fish and other beings in the sea know when we are intending to murder them for food? I think a lot of animals have this intuitive ability that most humans have, have lost a long time ago. For instance, if you're diving on a coral reef and you've got a spear gun in your hand, the fish will keep their distance. They know what that is. But if you're diving with a camera in your hand, they will come right up to you. So they know what your intentions are. If your intentions are to kill them, they're, they're going to keep their distance. If your intention is to photograph them, they're there. Like Supreme Master Ching Hai, Captain Watson believes that there is only one solution to end the appalling and horrific destruction of marine life and large-scale killing of land animals, the global adoption of a plant-based diet. I think that uh, her promotion of veganism is one of the healthiest things really because this really is the key to uh, changing our attitude towards animals and actually even be able to survive on this planet really. Uh, that's why our ships for instance are all vegan vessels and we have been for so many years because it's uh, to try and lower our you know impact upon the ecosystems and also to demonstrate uh, a sensitivity and a kindness to all, all, all living things and I think that is probably to me the most important thing that she is speaking about and, and she's trying to get across to me that's the most important thing. 
Captain Watson has a final message to share with us. We have to understand that we have an int intimate connection with our oceans and that if the oceans die, we die. And if we want to survive and leave a legacy to our children's children's children, then the best way to do that is to preserve and protect and defend biodiversity in our ocean. Captain Watson, we are grateful to you and all the remarkable Sea Shepherd volunteers for your spirited, passionate defense of marine life on the high seas, your love of animals and determination to achieve your goals are truly admirable. For more details on the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, please visit www.seashepherd.org. Open-minded viewers, thank you for your thoughtful presence today on our program. May all beings on earth enjoy long and harmonious lives. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.